and... But I'm saying it, it's like I don't want to cram in sex or uh, guns, you know, I, or characters learning profound life lessons, growing or overcoming obstacles to succeed in the end, you know. And life isn't like that, you know, it just isn't. And you know, I feel very strongly about this. I'm sure you've heard the idea that all stories are the same. This notion was popularized by Joseph Campbell in the last century, and his Hero with a Thousand Faces has been used as a plot guide for a generation of filmmakers. He called it the monomyth. This is also the theory articulated by Dan Harmon, filmmaker and author, best known as the creator of Rick and Morty. His story circle breaks each of the Campbellian story beats down to one word. You, need, go, search, find, take, return, and change. Essentially a protagonist, you, and then seven actions performed or taken in the world. Both for Campbell and Harmon, the idea is that all stories have a similar structure that correspond to two states of reality, the ordinary world and the special world. Or you might think of it in terms of consciousness and unconsciousness, or the known world and the unknown. And so you can break all stories down in terms of this fundamental duality. Home, then the journey, then back home again, like the baseball diamond. You might think of this as a theory similar to the idea that all songs have a verse and a chorus, or that all chord progressions involve the tonic tone and then the tension chord and then return to tonic. It's home away and then back home again, like the baseball diamond. While this is true on a general level, sometimes it behooves us to drill down into what the differences are between types of stories. Think of it in terms of knowing the difference between, say, blues, jazz, and swing. They may all share a very general level of coherency, but if you wanted to write a song in one of those genres, the different conventions in each genre are important. I've read and studied pretty much every book I could find on story structure. As soon as I explain something to you, okay. anybody who says he's got the answer is going to attract desperate people. There are no rules, Donald. Oh, is, let's, is let's, just, let's, you know, not rules, principles. That a rule says, you must do it this way. A principle says, this works. Look, my point is, and has through all remembered time, those teachers are dangerous if your goal is to try to do something new. Writing is a journey into the unknown. I've even attended the famous Robert McKee story seminar, the one parodied in the movie adaptation. We have a long three days ahead. Years from now, you'll be standing around a posh cocktail party congratulating yourself on I am pathetic. I am a loser. So, what is the substance of writing? It's this project head on. And, and God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Like the protagonist in that movie, I've quite often found myself with writer's block after so much talk of structure, with lines and graphs and formulas creating a cacophony in my head. I've been searching for the most useful way for someone who aspires to write, whether that be in novels, short stories, or screenplays, to understand what narrative is fundamentally about. The goal being that anything studied should cause one to be a better storyteller, writer, or filmmaker. But all the different rules and graphs and formulas, at least in my case, seem to be stifling rather than enhancing my creative endeavors. Make sure the inciting incident is on page five. Be sure to put the act one turning point between page 20 and 30 and so on and so on and so on. I was in this sense of frustration when I discovered Christopher Booker, a British journalist who happened to spend his time reading novels and studying the story. I can remember the day I found this very large tome sitting on my father's coffee table when I visited one Christmas. It represented 30 years of careful thought and study about what story is fundamentally about. Now Booker expands the notion that there is one story to the idea that there are seven universal plot types. Remember Dan Harmon's seven words to describe the typical story journey? Need, go, search, find, take, return, change. It was as if Booker had broken down each of those words into entire plot types. It was as if a fractal pattern was emerging right in front of my eyes. All stories, aggregated together, constituted the same shape as each individual story composed in the Campbellian, Harmon-like way. The more I studied them, the more I started to get the sense that each of the seven plot types represents a certain territory on the map of human experience. For me now, 
Each of the seven story types exhibit a certain personality and have a certain feel or tone that I can pick up on in an instant. When I'm stepping into one of these plot types, either as a viewer, reader, or watcher, it can feel as if I'm greeting an old friend. I have taken to visualizing the maps that constitute each story type and come to expect and love the characters that typically live in each of those specific areas, like the comfort found in the benevolent voice of wisdom, usually personified by a bearded old man, that is so often found at the beginning of quest stories, or the magic and whimsomeness of the fairy godmother type in rags to riches plots, to the grizzled and uncouth border figure, a little bit scary, but possessing knowledge of the shark or dragon in the overcoming the monster story, to the underhanded and upside down tactics of the accuser figure, who rules the underworld in voyage and return plots. What I'd like to do in this series is introduce you to some of these old friends of mine, show you where and how they live, why they exist in our imaginations, and guide you through some of the mapped territory that I have explored. You may find that you discover an affinity with the fundamental questions about the human condition, raised by countless other fellow humans down through the centuries, as expressed in one of the seven stories. When students or co-workers or classmates or friends of mine over the years have embarked on a story journey, it often seems as if they are wandering through the world of the archetypes with nothing but a little headlamp, more or less feeling their way along. My aim here is to provide a little bit of guidance, courtesy of all the great storytellers and novelists and filmmakers of the past. When you come to this fork in the road, you will probably find this person there. When you round that bend, watch out, because the accuser will try to trap you into non-identity. Don't forget that the magic you receive from the fairy godmother or the genie in the lamp will eventually run out. So this means that I will not so much be giving you graphs and formulas and rules. Not rules, principles. Or principles. And God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. But rather, exploring and comparing stories that fit together like the puzzle pieces of our collective unconscious. Journey with me through the strange and wonderful land of the story archetypes, and let's ask fundamental questions about the human condition together as we go. It's wild and wonderful and beautiful out there. Thank you.